Hello. So we're continuing to look at this thing of the arrival of Christ, the arrival of hope. Today, we're looking at Luke 2, verses 8 to 21. Uh, let me read it to you. Here we go. There. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that's happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they'd heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it came to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. And so we come into the celebration part of the Christmas story. First of all, the shepherds, not just any shepherds, but night shepherds. These guys were considered to the people in the towns to have a very small skill set. These uh, night shepherds would have been outsiders in most societies at this point in time. And yet, these outsiders looked down upon from most were the very people whom God decides to share the news of the birth of Christ with first. How amazing. How does this encourage me? It encourages me because God came down to those whose society were rejecting and not only involved them, but shared the news with them first. This was a tone setter for the whole life and ministry of Jesus Christ. God came down for all, even the last and the least and the lost of society. God doesn't look at status and determine who to include. Jesus came for all and the inclusion of the night shepherds was a step in showing this to everybody. Who is a night shepherd in your world? Who are the people that others decide that they or they decide they don't want to be around? Who are the people that you know that other people avoid or don't connect with? How can we include them this Christmas? How can we bring some good news to them? And then the shepherds, like true rock stars, want to see and they want to celebrate. The shepherds go from spectators to active players. They get involved and they go to Bethlehem to see what the angels were celebrating and they see what the fuss is all about. And they're then moved beyond spectating into celebrating with others. All too often, many of us are more comfortable spectating than being active. We're more comfortable listening to the songs and prayers and the nativity story, watching the stories on TV, listening to the radio and Christmas preaches that tell the Christmas story. The shepherds show me that Christmas is not a time for spectating, but a time to be involved. How can we be get involved? Number one, actively celebrate by sharing what you have. Not only presents, food, time, company, love, your story and testimony. You have the love of God because of Jesus Christ. Celebrate it by sharing it. Number two, include others. Don't spectate alone, but be involved with other people and include them in your celebration. Three, keep God front and center. When the shepherds told everybody, the shepherds praised and glorified God continually. They kept God front and centre. How can you keep God front and centre this Christmas? The challenge I have that's written on my heart is, will we follow the shepherds example this Christmas?